All right, guys, you know this man, Eric Freeman, Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. You know him from that. I'll tell you what, guys, keeping it real with you, all right? You're used to him saying garbage day. I'll tell you what, this man is way more than that. He's cool as crap. Welcome, my friend. <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> man, I can't beat that. I've never had quite the introduction. <laughs> <laughs> well, seriously, he's cool as crap to have you, man. Oh, yeah. No, it's really, thank you. I, I'm, I'm glad to be here. I'm sorry I was late. Um, you're good, bro. But yeah, I know it's, uh, we got a lot in common. You guys are, are play metal and you're, you know, excellent musicians. And I oh, dabble with the guitar and, uh, you know, I mean, that's just one of many things we do other than horror fans. So yep. cool. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, man. <laughs> Man, yeah. uh, well, you, okay, so yeah, you've seen my guitar, bro, the Richelieu, yeah. man, and, and yeah, I remember you showing me uh, in the email, the black one, you know. Yeah. yeah I, see, we're on the same page, man. I choose the cream color, what I have, you know, any day yeah. over black. I, <laughs> no, no, I, I re, you, you turned me on to uh, what you had, and then I went and looked it up, and I found one on Reverb, uh, a black one, and then we kind of said, yeah, but cream's way better, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yep. but um, no, it's uh uh, you know, I remember when you say what you had, it, it, it dawned on me that someone gave me a book on guitars, like cool guitar book. It was all a bunch of uh, illustrated pictures. And and, and and I remember I said, Rich Lou, that's really rare. They only made like a hundred of them and, right. and so on. And then, but yep. yeah, you, you filled me in on the whole backstory on that. And, uh, yep. and uh, you know, that's, that's cool. You know, and, and you know how this shit skyrocketed in the last few years. So Yep. You know, the sky's the limit on what that's worth. I mean, people, you might be able to pick one up for whatever, but it, as time goes on, exactly. you know, it's uh, rarer than hen's teeth or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I kind of think a black one would look cool, you know, like, I mean, it looks I could cool. imagine Darth Vader playing it. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I, I mean, yeah, me and him, I guess, yeah, we'd go with cream on that. I like, I like my cream. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, because it's guitar too. So yeah, yeah, it's something about it. You know, if it were just white, but it's like a, back then they painted it all in lacquer, and and they all start off a little whiter, you know, and and then they get darker and darker as time goes on. So that vintage cream is really almost like a yellow pastel, you know, a light a light yellow. And yep. um, I don't know, it just it looks to me, it's just it's got the cool factor so oh yeah absolutely man and speaking of guitars you my friend have a fender stratocaster with you man it, yeah it, i just was uh, yeah i was showing off a minute ago with what uh i just like it i i got a few <laughs> but, um i think it's for me i like the big yeah uh, joe walsh said uh when joe wallace was asked well what do you what advice can you give young guitarists uh, starting out and he said uh big frets high action and 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 but he's right. I've got big stainless steel frets on this thing. And because um, fenders, and you guys know the fender world, for years they had these tiny little nothing frets on their guitars. And it's like Gibson had the wide, fat, tall ones and much easier to play. And, and, and Schecter, you know, I mean, everybody has these, you know, decent size, medium jumbo frets and easy, you know, cause you want to bend and you want to, and all this shit you got to worry about, sorry, my language, oh, and all yeah. this stuff you have to worry about, <laughs> um, you know, bending and stuff of the, you might slip or something with your fingers and, right. you know, yeah. you, so big frets, uh, high action. So. <laughs> I got you. I got you, brother. <laughs> I got Anyhow. you. Anyhow. I got yeah. you. All right. How many guitars do you own, my friend? <laughs> Uh, 45 maybe 50 oh, wow. <laughs> uh, I, I don't it, really I don't I, I went crazy about eight or ten years ago and there were these um I have one over here but it, it there's a fender uh, just uh, quickly fender uh, was letting Indonesia make Stratocasters they were their 70s reissues the big headstock uh reissue um it, 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 so it's a 70s RI in, in Indonesia make. They make a fine guitar and it had all the good pickups, a good double, do two post, a, a two post bridge. So like updated modern bridge, very good pickups, very good neck, very good everything. And, and these guitars were all over LA um, in Craigslist and whatnot. And I remember I'd find them for 70 and 50 and 60 and, and 90 and and I just would buy, I see, these are the greatest freaking guitars that they could make for, like, they're $300 guitars. New, I got you. 
but but they they don't you know and indonesia makes good product it wasn't like china of old where it's, it's china's are still dicey but i just would scoop these things up at pawn shops and craigslist and and i just they they do everything you want them to do it they're comfortable good necks and um slim where they need to be slim on the neck and you know and so on and so on but uh i just i w- i probably got 10 or 12 of those and mm-hmm. <laughs> only because they were like you say, well, Eric, you moron. Why not just not buy 12 crappy guitars and just buy like another American standard or, or, you know, but you just, you know, you guys are like hot rodders and fixers and stuff. And, and it's like, I want to, usually I get these and it would stay, it would, they'd always say, well, it, it doesn't stay in tune or uh, I, you know, and so I just bring it home and tinker with it and get the bridge to lie down and, and tighten the tuners and the stuff that comes, comes loose and, you know, all of a sudden I turn this this sow's ear into a you know a, you know a, something good, and so uh, that I, I just kind of like fixing stuff. So yeah, right. You I get mean, it. It's like, hey, this yeah. thing doesn't play because you didn't know what you're doing. And I do, and so mm-hmm. put it on the bench, and uh, yep, yep. And, fit, and then all of a sudden it's a player, and then on to the next. But um, <laughs> but no, I I love I love fixing these kinds of things because. Uh, years and years of restoring cars and stuff it's like i I grease up to my elbows and grease all i'm just grease and uh, just you know and it's like man guitars are just so clean (laughs) i I like that i like that yeah (laughs) so anyhow sorry about that yeah well man speaking of guitars man who are your favorite guitarists dude (laughs) oh god i you know i i i I, I, I don't follow the path you guys uh, all the way until r- later in life, but um, you know, I, I, I liked, um, Oh God, I didn't out of my head. <laughs> I, when I growing up, I, um, we had, a, we had vinyl, we had albums. <laughs> yep. You guys wouldn't know, but, <laughs> but uh, you know, I used to go to these record stores when I was 12 or 13 in, in Minnesota in Hopkins and, and I go to the, the the used like fifty cent dollar fifty, and I'd find guys like Albert King and Rory Gallagher and 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 uh, Johnny Winter, Johnny Winter, Johnny Winter, and I would just I would get all these guys that could just wail on the guitar, you know, power trios and just you know bass, drums, guitar. Uh, but no, I would. Um, what's his name? He's um. Why don't I know this? Because he was with Rainbow and he was with a uh, 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 great guitarist, uh, English chap. Um, anyhow, yeah, no, Rainbow and... and uh, oh, yeah, was, yeah, yeah, Richie Blackmore. Yeah. Richie Blackmore. Yeah, that's what I, I was yep, thinking, yep, but I didn't yep. want to say it, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, no, no, you're right. Amazing, it, yeah. But, no, yeah, because he's... You can almost tell that this guy grew up like you know reading music and, and chords and scales and you know english and everything proper and you know and, mm-hmm. and then somehow you know probably got stoned one day and, and said hey this this rock and roll stuff's pretty cool and uh so the, the i you know just a, he's a great guitarist and i, oh, yeah. I you know highway star and all, so i would i yep. but i and then i gravitated you know as you say you know the, you guys got your well, who's my favorite? Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I, I, don't know, I liked Robin Trower for years because he's been at it so long. He, he's not a great guitarist, but he's, I like his, the way he, his leads are like, like melodies, almost like chord yeah. structured chords. He's, he's just, a, he just takes off on it. You know, you know how this is though, I, I guess, but every great artist, whether it be Santana or Robin Trower, it's always their first album or second. It's always, the heyday when they're the most inspired and they have their best, they have their best stuff coming out of the gate. You know, I mean, yep. look, Santana, you know, black magic woman, all this stuff that like, you'd almost say with today that Santana is like, well, he's a gun for hire. He hasn't had anything original in years. He's, he was at better 30 years ago. You could say a lot of stuff and then all of it to me is true. And his, his area that he was as hottest was, you know, seventies and eighties, you know, and, um, it's just that you're the most inspired then and, and everything's fresh and you're the best poet then and you, you write the best and yep. but I, it's, it seems like most of these guys like Johnny Winter I mean 
God, you know, <laughs> the guy was like a buzzsaw, you know, with his yeah. humbuckers and his Gibsons. And, I got but, you. <laughs> uh, you know, to me, it's uh, the early stuff is always when they're just on fire. Yep. And, um, yep. So I, I can't really say it was my favorite. I mean, heck, I went and saw Ted Nugent when I was 14. I thought, oh, Ted Nugent's the best. And, there you go. And, <laughs> but he had put on a show and, you know, Marshall Stacks, you know, the. Yep. Uh, you crawl in, he'd crawl in front of his Marshall stacks and he'd have that wind machine and his, his hair and his, uh, you know, his, uh, you know, he'd have like a scarf and it'd be blowing in the wind <laughs> playing that hollow body Gibson and just uh, ripping it up. And so there, you know, I don't think he, I forgot what our artist said to me, one, not to me, he said in an interview that mm -hmm. he said, I, I, I didn't go out to be the best guitarist. I just wanted to be a rock star. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, the best guys are not necessarily, you know, the, the guys I like aren't the aren't great guitarists. You know, they're, I got you. they're, they're, they're good and they're, they can handle, you know, you guys know all too well when it's, you can be a decent guitarist, but you better be decent when you're amplified <laughs> because that's a whole new ball game. <laughs> and, I got you. Uh, I got you. I got you. you know, it's a lot I different. <laughs> when, I got you, brother. <laughs> when you're, you know, cranking that dial, everything has to be spot on. So mm -hmm. um, I'm not, I, you know, I've always just gravitated towards how if the move, if the music moves, yeah. And it, and for me, it's rock or metal. We yep. talked about Dawkins the other day. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And yep, yep, and uh, George oh, uh, Lynch, man. Yeah. Yeah, and you know it's like holy shit. <laughs> uh, sorry, <laughs> Yo, I did that again. <laughs> I shouldn't have swear. And and, and um, but yeah, no, I I like uh, I, you know I like inspired. I like guys that just take off. I, I love bass lines. You know, I know JC's ba bass and drums kind of set are the backbone, of course. That. Without that, you have nothing, <laughs> and they they give the guitarist like free reign to to go places, and a, you know, in a good basis, is be right there and making up his he's, he's not making it up, but he's 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 following suit, so to speak. And uh, but I love bass, and I I've got a couple of them, and I uh, mm -hmm. nothing's cooler than that. When you get a riff going on a bass, get out of the way, man. That guy's got it, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I'm. I, I love it. I've got an old hollow body bass by. Um, God, it's a, it's an old Japanese one. It, it almost looks like kind of like what McCartney used to play. The old, uh, um, uh, uh, but it's a it's a it's a hollow body bass. That, uh, okay. but it's it's really really nice. It's a uh, no, it's Italian. That's right. It's I, I forgot. I've been so long since I pulled out, but boy, that thing's got the sound. And I hear you. you just don't want to. I don't. I don't want to part with this stuff. It's because everyone's a unique little baby that I've I've saved. You know, it's a, like a little orphans comes my way and I patch them up. And <laughs> I just don't feel like you know letting them go. It's like wait, I I I took that thing when it was a pup and fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So, yeah. I'm a uh, nut. <laughs> Well, I, I totally understand what you're talking about, how they're like your little babies, you know, because like they was a while back I went to Guitar Center and there was like a little uh, Ibanez Geo there yeah. and it was 80 bucks <laughs> and I just picked it up, just started playing it and said, let's see what a $80 guitar plays like. <laughs> and I'm like, I love this little thing. <laughs> says, I got to have this, you know, and I... I bought it right then and there and took it home, you know. I mean, <laughs> but what I liked about it is the the neck and the frets were worn. Like somebody, you know, played the heck out of that thing, and it was so comfortable the neck on it, and that's what I liked. There about you go, it. yeah. <laughs> yeah, kind of kind of like an old 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 shoe, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it already was worn in, you know. Yeah. And no, then, and uh, I I agree. Not to cut you. I I think a lot of it too is the the edges of the of the necks they get they get rolled they get nice and smooth you know and right. it becomes it feels like an old glove you put yep. and it's like you, you, you that's time and someone putting the time it's like wow this guy it, it, it it's like his hand was sanding it ever so slightly for 20 years or yep, right. whatever and um yeah no i get it it doesn't have to be you know sometimes you know like i said i got these 70 dollar guitars and you say well geez 
uh, how could it be good? But, you know, if the pickups are good and the bridge is good and the neck feels good, well, if you yeah, look, yeah. When, when you get down to it, if yeah. everything's right, if the bones are right and you want to change the pickups, we'll change them. But yeah. that's the only way to improve it. You throw in new pickups and otherwise everything else is, is going to either play or it's going to, the wood's going to work or it's not going to work. And, uh, mm hmm you know, people go, oh, I've had so many, oh, well, you know, I've got a 74 Les Paul. I've got a, I've got a, you know, so-and-so strat. And some of these are museum pieces. They're, the the neck is a log and it plays like shit and it looks great on the wall, but it, it you know, it, it's, it's worth tons of money, but it, it's, yep. it, 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 you, you still take your geo and you, you can go play with it. And, right. and yep. you can't, you know, some of this stuff is like, it's a museum piece that deserves to be you know, uh, admired, <laughs> but mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't, you know, they didn't have laser guided GNC, you know, machines for lays and stuff. Now that we, I mean, you can take good wood and, and make a nice body neck, whatever guitar for cheap. And so yeah. it, you know, some of these great guitars are using these, um, Squire, uh, uh, uh vintage, the vintage vibe squires are like 300 bucks. And they, and they're great guitars, so you don't really have to go blow a thousand or two or three. Mm -hmm. You can have a Richelieu that came to you through, you know, your father, and mm -hmm. and yep. you can say, "Well, oh my God, yep. <laughs> do I do I need anything else?" And you really Thank you. don't. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. Exactly. Yeah. That's my baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got yeah. a little Squire that I bought about twenty years ago. I paid one sixty nine for it. I still have it, and I still play it almost every day. And I wouldn't take ten thousand dollars for that little guitar. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah, and 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 you know, someone somebody said to me once, well, I maybe that Chinese guy had a good lunch and he made that guitar after lunch, and that's why it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, who's to say? But sometimes they, it's the diamond in the rough, and yeah. where the the other ones may not. You know, they have fret problems, they have sharp edges, they, you know, and this one is just a baby, and uh, and it. So, yep, I get it. It's yep. you know, whenever I'm looking for these things, I'm always like looking, seeing what the bow in the neck. I'm looking here, I'm looking there, I'm looking at the stuff that the people like. are probably thinking, what is this psycho looking at? I'm just looking at things that <laughs> could potentially be a problem, or can I fix this? If I tighten the truss rod, can I pull the can the neck flatten out? It can, right. you know, whenever you find an old guitar, the the action's way high and it can't play, and there's all these things wrong, and I'm I'm looking at, well, can I tighten that truss and straighten that thing out? And, mm -hmm. and but you know, that it's always a gamble. You go home with this $169 guitar and you, you say, you know, it's like rolling dice, man. Yeah, <laughs> a, yeah. Right. And uh, I hear you. Anyhow. Oh, yeah, yeah that's the, cool. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know, guitar medic. Yeah. Yeah, you're like it's like you you really get out the paddles and see if you can resuscitate her. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't think you knew that. Uh, this man right here is an EMT, so he definitely would know that stuff. Oh, perfect! Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I've shocked a few people before. <laughs> <laughs> then you know, yeah. No, I, I'm sorry we're dwelling on, but no, the, the people love guitars, and I think that's why yeah. we still sell millions of them every year and so anyone tuning in it's like well what's freeman talking about but <laughs> guitars are like you know it's like you know whatever it's like a beautiful woman or whatever uh -huh. yep. you know yep. whatever it's uh, yep. so it's ubiquitous exactly. everybody likes guitars exactly yep. yeah yep. Yep. heck yeah man heck yeah man yeah, yeah. It's just like women i mean they still make Nice looking women after Audrey Hepburn. Yeah, <laughs> right? There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Well, she was a thin one, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, I, I guess you you couldn't even say she was a size two. Today she'd be like a size 0. 0.5 or something. <laughs> but yeah, she... <laughs> She's a, she's a little petite little girl. Yeah. <laughs> That's all the better, but... Um, <laughs> I hear you, you know, man. we're kind of these days we're looking kind of the bigger, bigger, bigger rumps, you know. The <laughs> 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 so, yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Sorry. Oh, no, but it's you're true. Funny, man. You're cool, man. No, we're kind of, we're kind of, we're, we're, we're into a different 
flavor, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Well, dude, I'll tell you what. All right, so, dude, I got to ask you, man. If you, had to, right. if you had to choose your favorite metal band, what would you choose, man? <laughs> no, God, that's a hard one. I don't. I know you have your favorite. And, and I Maybe don't. Docking? Well, I no, they were, they were good. You know, I only brought them. It, just, it was because they were from England, you know, and it was kind of, it was kind of neat to hear you know, obviously they they got the flavor of what was going on in America back in the day and where it was going, and it's just that I, not necessarily, I, I just, I, you know, I, I guess I, I, I feel I, I have a few favorites. I guess I mean, like for example, who 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 do you guys like the best uh, out of metal bands in, in American? I guess. American, uh, American. I'm going with. We probably would both say Metallica. Metallica, yeah. The American, American names, yeah. yeah, yeah. That seems to be a fairly common, you know. Yeah, uh, I love uh, Iced Earth. I don't know if you've heard of Iced Earth. They. No, I have. I have heard. Never oh, heard okay. them. Uh huh. But um, you know, it's funny. In every in the metal world, we're talking great musicians. You can only you can say the same for country. I'm not into the country and lyrics per se, per right. se, because they're they're very shallow. They're like as deep as a puddle. But right. the freaking musicianship of of, of sorry I, <laughs> uh, of country bands and 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 of metal people don't even they, they all metal. Some people just discount it, and not understanding how great these musicians are. Yep. And, and they're 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 absolutely nuts because these guys. Scales backwards, forwards. They, every part of the neck is being used when they play. Um, right. I admire all of this. I'm like, whoa! Look at that bassist. Look what the drums are doing. It's yep. uh, they, you know, whether it appeals to you or not, what their the sound they're making. Uh, you cannot deny how good <laughs> Metallica yep. is. Uh, yep. Lord, and so uh, I look at it more like, wow! Look at that! Look what he did! I'm more. I'm always just floored when I see this, this stuff. Like. Holy Moses! Yeah. Look, you know, look at that run he was on here. And uh, yep, yep. Could I ever do that? <laughs> and then, you know, and, but I you. Uh, you know, I, I we all have to go. I get yeah, and to play their music, you know, it's another level. I mean, you guys are probably like studio musicians in the sense you can play many people's music. You've got your own style, but that that to me, a, a studio musician's the best out there. I mean, he can do everybody's work and yeah, his own. Right. They can do everything, yeah. And 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 you just so you know, yep. As I said, like Santana's got his sound. He's got a certain thing he does, and everybody's got their little tricks or that. Immediately know when you hear it as, oh, that's Van Halen. Oh, that's that's uh, George Lynch. That's so oh, that yep. you 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 get it by a, for a few bars or a chord or. A, the, 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 it's all their their amp and their style and whatever. It, I forgot who I think Ted Nugent said that once of playing Eddie Van Halen's guitar. He said, "Oh, I'm going to sound like Eddie," and he said, "You know, it didn't matter. I still sounded like Ted Nugent." <laughs> and uh, you know, it didn't matter if he was playing Eddie's guitar. But uh, yeah. um, you know, it's uh, it's it's the way you, your fingers hit those notes, and it's that amp, and it might be a Marshall, it might be. You know, Fender might be, whatever. It's something you know. Ace, you know, might be something off that we you know you put through the back of one to another. It's it, all the different sounds you can get and and different pedals and but everyone's you know you, you, REM or whatever you go. Okay, they, it's a certain. So it's really it's cool when you listen to something. And go, God, that sounds a lot like that. I swear that's Johnny Winter and. and, and <laughs> You 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 listen and say I and then you turn out that's some song I never heard from the seventies and and um, but it's a style mm -hmm. and yep. uh, you know a lot to do with the guitar and amp and but mm -hmm. that stuff that's all very cool to me because I, I hear it and go oh wow that's a that's a Gibson yep, <laughs> that's yep. a Fender yep, and yep. Uh, you know I hear you. but um, no I'm very much into these uh, just tinkering with it it's fine it's fine everybody does it whether they're the side of their bed or they're they're going out to a gig at the, yep. and playing in front of crowd it's all 
Yep, yep. All it is, and you guys know this, you probably grew up with them going to, you know, walking around diapers with a guitar in your hand, but um, <laughs> the it, it's how much time you put in. I don't, you can't, there's no, it's all it is. Put the yeah, time in, yeah, get right. some direction. Yep. And, and, you know, you can just Google it if you want. YouTube, uh, how yep. do you play X? But, um, God, those there's so many great guitarists out there. It's just like I, I sometimes don't want to see someone said, Hey, Eric, come see Jeff Beck with me. He's at the bowl. I've got a ticket. And, like, and I'll go and do that. And then I'll feel so although I won't pick up the guitar for a week and it's all wrong, but it's like I'll, you know, I I, I get dejected. It's like go see George Lynch or go see Vitalik. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, oh yeah. God. <laughs> you know, and I I should think in my head, try harder, try harder. <laughs> <laughs> but you get it. Sometimes you're like, wow, I don't even want to pick this up now. I was like, <laughs> but <laughs> I bet, man, I bet you, you rip on guitar, man. <laughs> no, I'm okay. I, 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 I'm, I'm not you guys, but um, there's, t you know, I know you've probably had this when you were getting good and you were just about to get good or you, you know, that there's times when you're like, wow, I'm really good. <laughs> and then, and then if I don't really put my heart and soul, I think it's shut everything else off any extraneous and feel it and you know you can't have any background or you know your girlfriend can't be there whatever your cat can't be crying or the dog can't be barking because i think that's when you get into it where it it means something yeah i got you yeah the notes and the notes and the notes and uh, yeah, yeah yeah and yeah. then the speed will come and but i i yep. it's time 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 how limber can my fingers do what my brain wants them to do Right, right. I got you. I got yeah, you. I think. And I'm at that stage where my fingers are not quite where I want, where my brain wants them to go. <laughs> I got you. So, <laughs> I got so you. I'm, I'm good. I'm not good. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Yeah. I don't know if yeah. it's like this for other people, but as I've been learning to play guitar, it seems like I'm pedaling uphill all the time. And it's like, as closer I get to a, a top of the hill, I slow down and I think I'm never going to make it over that little hump. And then one day I'm over the hump and like, I've learned something new, yeah. you know, like, but I've been practicing forever and never, and didn't think I was going to get anywhere. But then all of a sudden one day I hit a new level, mm -hmm. you know, and that's the way it's been for me. Practice and just yeah. one level at a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, you guys have met guitarists. I'm sure that, and I've had many of them say it to me that, you know, say, well, you know, I got a girl, I got married, I did this. I, I set it down for 10 years. He, but they'll always say, I'm a better player now than then. And so they stop, they stop. And, and I think they start, they, they listen to the notes and, uh, and you, there's a lot you can tweak out of in, in notes that, and many ways to play a note so to speak but they some of these guys that put it down for a while their life continues on they pick it up again they 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 always tell me they're better at it and you you think well that can't be but um they never they never lose the uh, that ability that you said you got over that mountain but they don't lose the ability of getting over that mountain ever even if they shelved it for a while they still right. can, they can right. get back to that place very quickly right 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 and then they can continue that yeah I gave it up for several years and then I picked it up again about two years ago and I play twice as good as I ever did. I love it. Yep. Now, you know. Yep, yep. I love it. Yep. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. So you're exactly right about it. Yeah. No, I, many, many really good guitarists. I I would be selling like a telly I just finished and for some idiotic reason I'm selling this beautiful Japanese telly and I, but I meet a guy that can that plays tellies for 20 years and he goes and he had always the same story and I'm like yeah I put it down I picked it up and and I'm I'm watching this guy he's like you know you know he's all he's like Al Demiola of of telecasters he's all over the place on it and it's like wow you know uh, and yeah. uh but you know it, it I think the, the ability because your brain won't let your fingers not do it again. It's it's like ingrained in your brain. It's your fingers, no matter if they're a little rusty, well, your brain will still tell your fingers what to do, even after 10 years. Right. right. It, exactly. You know, yep. it, it, yep. it might be a little rusty, but all of a sudden a week's time, you're like, hey, I'm right back to where I was when I was yep. at my best 10 years ago. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. 
exactly. and so mm -hmm. that's the good side for people learning guitars you you know you're gonna get it you're gonna get those all those chords you knew before it's all there mm -hmm. and, and so yep i would suggest don't put it down but if you right, did right. because life intervened and you need to make right. money and pay the bills and right. um it's all there it's there just keep keep noodling can you pay 20 minutes a day play 30 minutes a day mm. whatever yep. uh, yeah yeah and I, i'm i'm guilty of you know doing just that 20 minutes a day and i was like why am i not doing two hours a day and uh right. but you know uh, i was fixing guitars long before i i would play them when i when i was a young man i in 14 i I had a Les Paul custom I bought downtown. I, I, I told you this story, um, Stephen. But but you know I had a short time, and the, my mother drove away. My father's long gone. It's like I needed the money, and here's this thing worth ten thousand dollars today. I'm selling for another. You know, it sold for three fifty in a hard right. case. But but it um, you do what you do, and then all these years later, I I, I got a, I started fixing because I fix stuff, and so I'm fixing guitars for people and. Yep. And I said, well, why don't I start playing it? <laughs> yep. And I came into it on the backside. So, but I find, uh, I find it fun to just to take anything. It doesn't matter what it is and, and make it right. Like, oh, well, it's just, it might be a really cool old chair with a bad leg, but just glue the damn thing. And then it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. There's something about yeah. saving things. I got to get that out of my head. <laughs> You know, save that little dog. He's, you know, he's running around the alley. He doesn't have an owner. It's like, save him. No, that's <laughs> you know? cool. That's good. Yeah, that's cool. And uh, whatever. I don't know. Yeah. This, then maybe I'll I'll have a faster way into heaven now. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I, I, I kind of do the same thing. I pulled a battery charger out of a dumpster the other day. But, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh, th oh, by the way, this man right here is a genius. I mean, this man can make amps and stuff, man. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. You know, that genius. that battery charge, it, it, the thing is, I grew up very poor, and I I suspect, suspect you know, the, the, the people that are really good and can do this stuff and take, mm -hmm. you know, build, it's it's because we we never had anything, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's like I didn't have a, you know, anything I ever had was just saving pennies and raking <laughs> leaves, and, you know, it wasn't like, I'm glad I wasn't thrown bikes and baseball mitts and, 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 and bats and hockey sticks and all, you know, I wasn't given stuff. It was uh, all hard earned. So I, I, this good, this laptop on which I'm, you know, which we have the show today is 11 years old, but I took it and I, you know, I customized and beefed it up and, you know, and, but I just, I said, why do I have to go spend 600 when I got this, Fifty dollar thing that if I, you know, yep. do some magic to it, yep, yep. <laughs> you know, and, wow. and so, <laughs> and that that whole idea, what you guys know and I know on that is is that's not, that's not modern man, you know, <laughs> they're uh, they'll just oh you know it's oh it's, it seems to be broken, honey, let's buy another one, <laughs> you know, I whatever you. it's all I got you. disposable, <laughs> yeah. I look at cool old stuff like, man, that's a really cool old whatever. Let's let's uh, let's <laughs> polish that up. <laughs> but I I swear, if I had the land and space, I'd be like Sanford, like Sanford and Son. I <laughs> <laughs> I would just have you know everything you could imagine. So if you ever you know, hey, do you have an old frigid air from nineteen? Yeah, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. That would be cool to have like four acres just of. What people would call garbage, <laughs> an old, you know, whatever, old, old cars, old this, so then it's like, you know, whatever. But um, that'd be neat to have room to, for my, for stuff. Because anytime you start throwing something out, I know this is completely not about Silent Night, Deadly, but have you noticed this? Oh, you look at something, you're cleaning up, you're, you're, you're throwing stuff out, and it's all of a sudden a week later you go. I need that. Oh, sorry. sorry. But you know, all of a sudden, oh, darn, I need that. So-and-so I just threw out. It's like, you know, it, but that's the way it is. You, you throw stuff out and all of a sudden, wow, I wish I had that old battery charger, I, I, you know, whatever. And I shouldn't have given it to my neighbor. And exactly. so, it, you know, I don't know. We, I, I just try to, 
I'm not a cheapskate, but I'm just smart about money. I'd rather spend oh, sure. it on, you know, you save it, you save it. I, I've yet to own a new car <laughs> uh, uh, because <laughs> I, I like cars with glass, headlights, they're glass. I like chrome. <laughs> I like, you know, I'm a nut, but you know, give me the old, you know, the old Ford truck and, you know, uh, yeah. whatever. <laughs> I got an old Honda, but it's not like I, I'll spend money. If someone, if someone I care about, you know, it's like, yeah, here, take this, have it, you know, do right with this or whatever. I, I feel good about helping people, but I, yeah. I, I'm my, and I'm wearing fifteen dollars with the clothes. I'm very happy with it. I don't, yeah, I don't need this, yeah, be impress, you know. So, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, but that's oh, the way. I agree. I agree. I never forgot that, and that's why I love you guys. It's because you guys come from. You know, in the Midwest or, you know, where, you know, where men are men and they, you know, their seasons change and they get shit done. And, and, you know, and, and I grew up in that. I've never lost that out in LA. I've not turned into what these people are out here. <laughs> like, <woo. laughs> so, you know, but I, cause they're just really, you know, I, I can't explain it. <laughs> the day, the day of the of the men that I revere, they're not around. Men aren't around out here, for lack of a better word. They're all very, you know, yeah, very tiny. Thought, yeah. You know, they're they're girls. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, we, hey, we've talked about it, brother. Man, like you, yeah. we were talking about it, man. Nowadays, like yeah. you said, man. I mean, like yes. I mean, I don't mean to like get off my lawn. I'm an, you know, but. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's different now. You have to be like you, you watch everything. I, in my words, I'm sorry if I swore a few times, but oh, you good? Um, <laughs> I, I, and I know better. But it's it's um, it's nice to be self sufficient when you need to be. I, you know, if I can change out a disposal or something, I, it's wise because there's 400 bucks I don't need to blow, and or water heater. We all know how easy those are to put in, but if you lay, if you leave it to a plumber, you're you know he's going to, you know he's going to do what he's going to do. But um, and I don't blame him. If I was putting one in for Mrs. Smith, I'd rake her over the coals too. So you know, but or maybe not. If she was poor, I'd go by the like, oh, she's poor. Well, you know, just give me what I got into it. Or if he, you know, if he looks like he, it's not going to hurt him to giving me money, I I would charge him. But you know, and yep. they all do that. And you go with the circumstance. If someone needs your help, here it is. Yeah. But, um, yep. you know, yep. anyhow, um, it's been years so since funny. this. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> anyhow, I, I know you got some other stuff we're, we're talking about, like um, anything SNDN. But, yeah, I, uh, you know. I did that movie. I was a little bit animated, and uh, it was, uh, uh, you know, I gotta say, it wasn't my best work, or it wasn't anybody's best work. But um, it, uh, he had energy, right? But that's the thing we talked on this. But I think what I, character I made, the reason why it's long lasting is 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 the guy's got some. He's fun, you know. He's fun, so. Right. Uh, and and you can't take that away. It's it's so goofy. It it, des it deserves to have a couple of shots of uh, Jim Beam and a and a and you know whatever else you like <laughs> and, uh, to enjoy the movie and because uh, it's fun. You know, it could be eggnog, but um, there you go. Yep, I love eggnog. I don't like looking at myself in it. You know, say hey, oh, do you watch this thing every year? No, but because um, it's me. And and it, who wants that? You know, I got you. Actors don't generally watch. Uh, the I've found out throughout the year they just don't watch dailies like what's what's shot that day, or they certainly don't watch uh, um, their work. And and many of them don't never see it. They just they do it and they feel that it's good and they they that's it. They walk away and on to something else. Um, but I really didn't have a a, a long career, but it's. It, it is a movie that I never, ever, ever thought it would ever come back. I was kind of glad I did, uh, you know, I was like, well, good, <laughs> you know, um, 80s, gone, you know, but uh, I was, I was working towards another, another job and, and something, you know, I, I always wanted more and wanted 
I want an honest soap opera because they were written really well. Tons of work, tons of pages, tons of dialogue. I wanted tons of dialogue. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason I got SNMDN because I um, I was reading for, I originally read for that, uh, went down to, to the to the casting of it and I read for the one of the cops a small couple lines or one line and 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 but I I spoke up as I was leaving and that is because I was like I don't want to keep getting one liners I don't want do you want fries with that sir uh so on so on so I spoke up and it worked for me I you know who's got the lead and uh I was immediately rebuffed and they just said we got it we we've got that locked so I left and um but I got a call back a couple of days later that, uh, you know, from what I understood, the producer kind of liked, he thought I looked more like the little Ricky from the first one and uh, all that. And, well, he's, he's in shape or whatever. This other guy apparently did what they wanted him to do in, in, in the, you know, in the scenes they were shooting, but or filming anyhow, the, 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 the um, audition, but I, so speaking up is good too, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That I guess that, that that's the best rule. That's the best thing that came out of that movie is that I spoke up and uh, right. yep. and it, it pay you know. And I think that good it's good advice. Don't. Yep. We all have the regrets that we didn't say something. We didn't say something to the, the you know. We I broke up with my. I've done this. I've broken up with many women because it it, it wasn't said. I didn't express myself. I was the, you know, the the, the, the quiet guy. I, I didn't, and lost her. Or I, mm -hmm. I, I didn't get that job because I didn't speak up. Or I didn't mm -hmm. speak up. And, yep. and yep. if you, you know, I wasn't ready for that movie, really, in, in many ways. But I, I physically was. I, I was ready. I thought I could tackle the world at that time. And I walked in and I owned every room I walked in. But the thing is, is um, I spoke up and that made the, you know, I, I wasn't necessarily... Uh, you know, I, I knew better. I acted poorly in it. I knew better. Go, but it, things just took over. But I did. I did the most important thing you could do. As I, I just uh, said, "Hey, you know, who's got the lead?" <laughs> and, uh, and that's history on it. And uh, and anyone else would have done a better job, no doubt, in, in acting wise. It would have been probably more boring. But would it be around today? Hadn't I been so bad, it wouldn't be around today. So, <laughs> so uh, you know, bad, but also good. He, I'm looking at myself in this movie too, going, "Wow, he's got, he's a ball of fire." Sorry. <laughs> so, um, uh, but yeah, no, I, I like, I like certain parts of it. If I can divest myself of looking at myself, I go, "Well, hey, that, that's Pat. That's, uh, you know, he's crazy." <laughs> so. Um, I but it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed watching your character, you know? I mean, like, he's a great villain. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I... It's entertaining. Uh -huh. It is entertaining. It is. I'd like to... <laughs> I'd like to bring him back. I really would. Um, but, yeah, I'm sure you got a, 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 some questions that would pertain to your audience at large about it. I, I'll answer anything, you know? Um, you already know how I feel. I, I'll, uh, I, I'm, I may be too hard on myself, but... Uh, it's lasted the test of time. I mean, why should it be around today? It's pretty wild, right? <laughs> but but it, it'll it'll I'll die and it'll still be like some kid born today will be watching it. You know, <laughs> when he's fifty, he's gonna like, yeah, I got this old thing. It's a DVD, but let's play it. You know, and, and, I hear you. Well, I don't know. I worry about all our content streaming and because it all be edited. Do you think that they they'll probably edit my movie if it all goes to just streaming? I wonder what it, it'll just be hacked to pieces, perhaps, you know, like, oh, we can't put that battery charger scene. That's just too, you know, that's too much. <laughs> and, or he, he's he's strangling a girl. Can't do that. You know, oh, I, think, I got you. I got you. You know, I, I think yeah, they'll I edit you. the heck out of this thing. You. So physical media to me uh, of all movies is I like holding on to movies I like. It's like Metallica or, you yep. know, let me hold on to this stuff so I actually have some physical media. So no matter what they do, um, I'll know what I'll know what re uh, I'll have those deleted scenes. <laughs> I'll have it. Yep. So 
Yep. You know, because we can look back at things I did like in living color. You couldn't do in living color today for nothing. Right, right, <laughs> I mean, right. Just, yep, yep. It's all very, you know, oh, sensibilities yep. and yep. oh. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah! Oh yeah! Absolutely. Everybody's offended at everything. Uh -huh. Yeah, they professionally yeah. offended, my man. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly, <laughs> professional brother. offenders. Yep. Prof <laughs> professionally <laughs> offended. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I know, man. I know. Oh, I mean, blazing saddles, man. Good lord, that would never go right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> 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 yep. Yeah. You know, it would be. They would even be offended of the good parts of like talking about. You know how big his his junk is. You know <laughs> that would even be bad. <laughs> You'd say, "Hey, that'd be good. I'd keep that in." But no, you could, that couldn't even be. You know where the yep. Madeline Kahn's like <laughs> raving about him. You know <laughs> that's bad. It's like whoa. But um, you know, it's uh, oh, that was young Frankenstein. But nevertheless, <laughs> it's that same principle of uh, you know, yep. oh, we can't have that. He's talking about you know, uh, but yep. um. Yeah, it's uh it's a whole new world. I'm I'm hoping that somebody'll come to you know that Andrew Dice Clay, just to divert, I think there's no better time for that guy to come back than right now. Right now. <laughs> I got you. I got <laughs> please you. come back. I said that ten years ago. I said, Andrew Dice Clay, please come back. But <laughs> it's like we need him to fill arenas. We need people to actually go and buy and 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 be offended by him. I you know? hear you. I hear you. <laughs> Oh, we're hey. on the same page, brother. We're on the same page. Oh, I agree hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely, man. <laughs> I'll pay. I'd like to hear some obnoxious. Uh, you know, to me, it's like uh, soothing. It's like, oh, I feel better. <laughs> but it went to someone else. It's like they're they're clutching their chest. <laughs> they're yep. oh, get the paddles, JC. Get the paddles. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, we're on the same page, brother. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And we talked about it, too, nowadays with music. The music sucks nowadays, man. Woo, woo, yeah. yep. <laughs> woo. Yep. But, it, it, you know, it's all, and then it's the, uh, what, what What do they do to it? Uh, the, the mixing, I forgot that there's a word for that. Uh, um, Too much auto-tune. Auto-tune. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> auto, they're just murdering music. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You know, first of all, be be good. You know, if you can sing, you know, just sing. And if you have to do five takes, get it. They'll just take the one take and they'll say, hey, don't worry, we'll get it in auto-tune. <laughs> or the, oh, that guitar riff wasn't my best. Don't worry, we'll make it your best. But it, it'll all come out like, you know, yep. just, I don't know. I, what happened to just competency <laughs> in, in music? And, and what's wrong with rock or metal or just, ass kicking and and you know hair flying and you know yep, yep. debauchery and, you know <laughs> I, I, <laughs> yeah what happened to that good old days you know where they actually liked it and yeah. uh, so, yep, yep, i yep. don't know i but I know, um I that's that and i, I it's got to turn around it cannot you know it cannot die i know like in the 50s and 60s they said that rock and roll that, that's just a fad it's a phase <laughs> I'm wondering if it is actually now. Yeah. Is it a phase? Uh, is it you know Kurt Cobain and it's kind of we 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 opened the the pussy door and every, everybody <laughs> piled in. Yeah. But uh, you know I just wondered if we can't do a 180 and I know I, it, I don't know. It, it, yeah. So, yeah. I, I remember I, telling somebody the other day. Uh, they was telling me about Billie Eilish or Eilish or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was listening to her and I'm like, does she sing? <laughs> no, she just whispers yeah. into the microphone the whole time. <laughs> I'm like, how is this? How is this a thing? I know. Yeah, I, that's why I say Billie Eilish. That's what. How is this a thing? I don't get it. I don't and get. You it. see these rappers that look yeah. like clowns with rainbow hair. <laughs> you know, like, and they yeah. say the same word like 27 times in a row and it's yeah. a song you know i don't understand it i, I don't get yeah. it yeah i don't get it no i know it's uh it's I, I just it. <laughs> I, I i like you know i like the pe people are really tuned into their emotions and, and 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 letting it out there and writing out you know rihanna's and the, the beyonce's and and i mm -hmm. and i get all that and you know the only one it's just that you want to I don't know the melody. The 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 the, the it's it, to me. It's like it's, I want that beat. I want the I want I want good lyrics, but I don't want them 
so specific as to be nauseating lyrics where you could a, a different person could take it a different way we could all take derive something out of the lyrics of the past right. and to take it and make it our own like oh, that's what that means mm -hmm. it's it's not as it's not highly specific uh, it, there's there's room there to for me to interpret and uh, you know what i'm talking about and they were more poets back then all of these guys they were mm -hmm. and, 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 and you yeah. know or, and, and lyrics were mattered back then but i yep. I, I would almost say that the the driving beat the music guitar bass and drums was really the it was the band and then they were saying something you know <laughs> and it's, yep. you know what i mean yep. a lot of these english chaps i couldn't understand what they were saying yep. i mean you could easily say that about bob dylan to these days i don't know anything that bob, i can't even remember <laughs> but, <laughs> but he was good <laughs> and, you know it's like it's funny okay. the, when the english sing you can almost understand them and they almost sound they, they sound more uh um I can understand them more when they sing them when they speak <laughs> in, in a sense you know, when they're when there's talking to you it's like wow that's a thick accent but when they see you can you can kind of figure out what they're saying lyric wise but um these days i, I the lyric it's just too yeah oh, it's yeah. so emotional so like bear your soul and heart and 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 you know it, it can go get old very quick <laughs> so i hear you brother Plus, it's yeah like gucci gang how does gucci gang make you feel <laughs> well yeah nowadays yeah a lot well yeah there's definitely lyrics that are absolutely stupid yeah know? yeah but you know where is the metallica is going to stand the test of time like the rolling stones like this or that yeah there are you know anytime you want to resurrect metallica and hit the road and, and do yep. con you're you're going to get an audience a big one right. and, yep. and yep. even probably bigger foreign wise Yep. You know, in Japan and stuff. I imagine they're massive, like kisses over there. But right, right. You know, and and it's just, um, I yeah. I, these bands today, you say Eilish and what? I mean, there's <laughs> it, it's flash in the pan, flash in the pan at 15 minutes. Uh, you know, they're like, you know, the it's like uh, Freeman and SND is it, you know one hit wonder or whatever. But it 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 you know they're they. they the test of time is the music throughout, you know, it's good. It's good. It's good. It made, it made a huge mark. These guys fill in Metallica, how huh? the yeah. stadiums fill them so yeah, yeah, massive. Yeah. And, right. and you figure right now there's Metallica fans from 65 years of age to, to 15, you know, it's a right. broad right. Right. base of folks that love this stuff. So yeah, man, I, they're out there. I know we're you're being being you know homogenized and pasteurized and, and whatever with all this new crap, but I I, yeah. I I think that there's still you know I'm hoping the young people can grab on to what was cool so they keep mm. it going. Yeah, yeah, amen to that, brother. Yeah, you got that right, man. Yeah, yeah dude. We're I mean, all like for that. Oh yeah, man. I mean the eight, like you said, man. Like that's why I, we're on the same page, man. Eighty. I freaking love the eighties, man. And you know, yeah. like. Yeah. You know, all that technical stuff, man. Like, what, what, they put time into it, for God's sake. You know, nowadays it's just shit thrown together. You know what I mean? I, <laughs> you know. Yeah. It's like they'll, they'll whip out really quick. They'll be inspired about a and they'll not. Sometimes you can knock out a great song in minutes, but yeah, the average guitarist and bassist, he's going over his riffs and over his riffs, and he's sitting down at the side of his bed. He's not amped up at all, and he's working this thing out yeah, hundreds yeah. of times, and he's going, yeah. you know, that's cool, and he wants yeah. to make sure he doesn't forget get and maybe tapes it down so then the morning it's like oh we go back and listen to that riff and say and he's building that and they build a song from it and you know i think ted nugent said you know by the time you hear that song that's a hit from ted nugent like wango tango i'm telling you i played it a hundred thousand times at the side of my bed <laughs> and and you know, meaning you know there's a lot that went into yep. that artistry uh, you know doggy dog or whatever but yep. um you know these days they just They'll they'll sample this and they'll they'll build they'll take a little sample of a bass riff and they'll they'll yep. build a song from it and you know they they're cheating they're just like cheaters yeah. you know yeah well, the engineers make most of the music yep. yeah yep mm -hmm. no I agree brother right so that, that's the cool thing we're all on the same page brother with like yeah <laughs> anyhow I don't know why but um, <laughs> yeah I don't want to kill you with this is, is anything intrigue you on SNDN you would want to talk about anything that oh, we can okay. go on that to make me 
either you guys want to ask or so uh you know your line your iconic line garbage day was that something scripted or is that something you just did it was it was on paper it was uh it didn't say to say it softly or um it did, you know, and I was wondering when I saw it, um, I had the, I, I had pieces of paper, I guess you'd call a script, but they were because of the way the film was shot with old and new. And I, I had, I had, you know, um, I had, I, I, I can't, I don't know how to really say it. I had a script, but they were really parts of a script. And in there was garbage day. And, and I remember it going, well, should I say that? Like, Clint Eastwood. I was thinking to myself, should I <laughs> under quietly, almost to myself, uh, should I? And and I can't say where that came from, but it was it was written. Um, the gunplay and spinning the gun was just the ad. Uh, I just did that. There's there was no, you know, he <laughs> he spins his gun, he blows. But 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 I I I came off of to get to where you're going as I came off of them. Um, killing the chip guy with the battery cables. And then we went directly into <laughs> strangling Liz. And then we went over directly to the shooting, the rent-a-cop. And then we, and then at that point, rent-a-cop, and he kind of, he was like Don Knotts. He kind of, he, I shot him and he kind of just went down in front. And I said, well, this is, I, I, something clicked in my head. Like, well, he's completely <laughs> nuts now. This is a comedy, you know? And, and so that stuck in my head. Then we did the garbage day. And so it was like, bing, bing, all the greatest hits of that movie were right within an hour, uh, you know, as fast as they could set it up. The longest part was the chip had stuff, which they were doing hours prior, trying to keep it on the, on the front grill of the car. And we, and at that time they were doing that, Liz and I were walking down the sidewalk talking about I wanted to bring her to a special place or something. And then so we did that scene walking on the sidewalk and they were getting the chip stuff prepared just off camera. So we did chip and then strangling Liz and then the the rent a cop and then garbage day. So when we hit garbage day, they put a gun in my hand and and we, we did the obligatory, well, there's blanks in it, and you know, here's how you handle this, here's the safety and and all new to me and I said, oh, okay 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 and then and then but we we were doing it you know and i i over exuberance um energy over the top i just I, I, we didn't do two takes either we did that take and i, I so i love this so yeah he's you know um it, it was nutty and and i would have liked and, and a lot of this stuff I would have loved to do a second take. Um, <laughs> going back, I did speak of, of auditioning for the cop role. And when we got to that scene where the cops are around me and I've got a gun to my head and I'm going to kill myself, that the cop that said the line that I auditioned for, like, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't, you know, stop. Right. <laughs> and, and, and I, I just burst out laughing and then, um, of this fit, terrible laugh, just all this is just in my head, and I got the gun. And the reason I brought that up is because the the co writer, uh, Joe Earl, wanted this other actor for the job, and he really didn't warm up to me. And was in the I remember specifically, we did that take. I laughed, and mo no more bullets, and did that, and and then it's cut, 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 and 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 Joe walks up to me, and says, Eric. He said, that was terrible. <laughs> and I said, yeah, I know. And I agreed. I, I was like, I said, I just wasn't there. I was just I was awful. I said, we're, we're doing another take, right? And he says, well, I'll talk to Lee. And then also like a few minutes come by and, 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 and Lee says, that's it. We're moving on. It's like, <laughs> so, so we didn't, you know, and there, yeah. And there was awful there. And then more, off. but it, it seemed to work at, if you seem it all together and you play it, but if you took that scene by itself and how I felt it was, yeah. how it was so wrong, and and and, but it, it you put it together and the movie's done, it's like, well, it's it's just nut. And but all in all, it's you know I don't I don't mind people going, wow, he was he he was uh, wow, that's uh, but. Uh, 
you get it. I, 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 yeah. I'm in that camp going, yeah, if you just kind of look at this, go, wow, how do you get the job? But, 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 but uh, uh, I, um, it, you know, it just, uh, I even, when I, I, I got to tell you, I auditioned for this. When I came down, they said, hey, Eric, we're looking at you for the lead. Could you come down and audition? That was the second time I came back to Burbank. Um, I played this straight. I wasn't Ricky as we know it. I, I in fact, they were, they had said to me, um, "Wow, that was it was kind of really dark." And 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 you know, um, and then that they were at, Lee and Joe, the writers of it, were acting out the scenes. I, I did my part. And then they were showing me, it, it, like they were acting them out in front of me what they were looking for and this and that. It was more lighthearted, and I thought. And they were telling me about the original movie and how dark it was, and it got pulled from the theaters and all the negative, as you know. And they were really looking to lighten this thing up and take out some of the more dark, objectionable stuff and and put in this Ricky kid. And so I I turned I didn't about face between auditioning and what I came up with, in and and you know I. You know, I we didn't. I didn't have. I did. And, you know, in my defense, because I did what I did, it's my fault. But I wish the director would have said, "Hey, Eric, let's uh, let's tone that down a little bit with Doctor Bloom. Let's uh, keep the Ricky for later." And but it, 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 there wasn't any of that. It was run and gun. Get it. Get the shot. I, I later learned that Lee and I. I may have said this to you, Stephen, but mm -hmm. that Lee had. Um, had said, I, I really don't, I don't coach actors. I, I just let them do what they're going to do. I, you know, right. He was interested in some very fancy shots. There's a lot of trick little stuff going on in that. Right. But right. the garbage day was written on page. I just, I just went somewhere with it. And, <laughs> and, 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 you know, it, it, it got progressively goofier. It just happened to be that all the stuff after garbage day actually was filmed in sequence. Oh, um, okay. Pretty much, it was one to, and then we ended up the, at the house and um, with Mother Superior, and that all went pretty much in sequence right to the end where I got shot. So I didn't mind being off my off the rails at that point. When I got in the house and it was two in the morning, and it's, uh, you know, I I remember Lee said, hey, "Go in that back room. I want you to cast a shadow with your axe and start swinging it and just say stuff." And, and you might there was a scene, and so I'm back there. You see the axe swinging or whatever, and I'm I'm going, I'm sounding like some, you know, some chef at Benny Hanna. You know, I mean, just, like, there's all this whoa, and you know, it's like, but it, 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 it's all very almost Japanese in a way, and I'm like, oh, yeah. Um, so it, it it went the way it went, but Garbage Day is iconic, and it seems like everybody wants that eight by 10 or they, I, I sign it, it's constant and it's on the front of my garbage can. I mean, it's a, it's uh it's there, you know, I, I hear you. I hear you. Well, you I'm surprised know, I haven't been, go. you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. There's another, but yeah, it's yeah. all these I mean, that was people have their favorite, favorite line too. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. There's always a <laughs> favorite, favorite line there for somebody. And, and, <laughs> When they're stumped, they sometimes I'm in these sightings and they they don't know they they don't know what they want and they go well just give me your favorite line like well, you know I I don't particularly have a favorite line but I so I I've had to think in my head of what I said in the movie and then you know right I'd put it on a poster you know or whatever right. just so because I come up blank more than anybody I, I these people that watch this movie they they know the dialogue. <laughs> Yeah, backwards and forward. Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've kind of, you know, kind of not paid attention, if you will. So I got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. I, you know what? I, I honestly like for real, man. I really do think it's cool as crap, though. You go to conventions and stuff, though, man. I mean, that's really cool, man. You know. Oh, thanks. No, no. Really in, is, you're, though, yeah. I, 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 I was uh, asked, and I was scared. Uh, a, a guy in, in Kentucky, Justin Powell, said, "Eric, look, they're going to love you. Don't worry." And I said, "I'm, I'm going to be the Maytag man. No one's. Gonna, I'm going to be lonely, is, you know." And he said, "No, no, you're not." He kept telling me I, it was going to be, 
you're going to be okay. And, and uh, yeah, no, they, they came, they would come from so far states away, a thousand miles away. And uh, I mean, and I, I'm more interested. Like if I met you guys in person, it'd be the same thing. Like, Hey, right. you know, and give me your story. And, and you might, Oh, my dad turned me on to this or, or they're they're I've had people crying in front of me because they lost their dad recently and their dad turned them on in the movie and they're, Oh, wow. It's internal, you know, it's, it's part of their wow. DNA. And, yeah. and so their best times they had was with their dad watching the movie laughing. And, and oh. so I, 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 you know, and to me, I'm just this guy that's lucky. And so, you know, so I, it's more important for me, for my soul to listen to their story. I get oh, more yeah. out of that than, yeah. you know, you know, absolutely. Than thinking I'm somebody. So, right, uh, right, right. Cause I'm damn lucky. I, I'll just say, Hey, look, <laughs> You know, who knew? So, you know, I get paid more in a va- I, you know, what I get, 1600 bucks for that movie in five days. It was great money in the day. I was like very happy. Um, but I, 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 I make s- some decent money in these, in, in some of these, uh, you know, mm-hmm. conventions. <laughs> oh, absolutely, man. I, I can't, I can't deny that I'm the luckiest guy in the world for this. And, and, and I know it. So, yeah. I try to do more. I try to do as much as I can. And I, I, I don't care how long the line is. I got to spend time. I'm not going to say, Hey, you know, you know, and then yep. that, yep. that's, they come for the experience. They might leave with an eight by 10, but it's the interact. It, I, I am completely flattered. I mean, the, yeah. they want to talk to me and we talk and we, maybe talk good guitars. It doesn't matter yeah. what we talk about, but, um, it's an experience they're leaving with. The eight by ten is just a, a memento of an experience, right? And right, and, right. and and so I I'm look I'm I, I I'm I'm very uh, standoffish about it. Oh, uh, you know, you know how I feel on it. I did it, but mm-hmm. I I do know that it touches people in certain ways and it is funny and it's a it's a go to movie every every fall winter. So, mm-hmm. um, you know. I, I, I'm, I'm glad I was so young when I did it because, uh, you know, my, if you go to the, if you went to the theater in the day, my head was like 40 feet wide. Some of these shots, I was like, right. I was, you know, close up. So uh-huh. it's all, only youth is good for the pulling that off, but, uh, yeah, no, it was, uh, it was all very good. I have good uh, memories of doing it. I remember all of it. And, uh, and Liz was great. And she was very sexy and she didn't, you know, all she, she didn't, she wrote, she, she drove a $50 car, like an old galaxy two door Brown $50 car and, and wearing like worn out jeans and, and, and t-shirt and, you know, little, like those kind of Ugg boots or whatever. I mean, she was wearing, she would leave wearing like $25 with the clothes, but looking great in it. And I was very, enamored with her because she wasn't like anything I, all those starlets uh, that were you know you know yep. those those yep yep uh, nose in the air whatever but this she was just she did not no, think she's better than anyone yeah she was completely like straight out of Iowa yeah. you know yeah. uh, <laughs> didn't and I even asked why are you driving you know and I would think because she you know, why are you driving this? And she goes, I don't care. And I was like, I always remember that. I don't care. Yeah. And, and I was, yeah, it's cool. You yeah, know? that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I, uh, I, no, I, I, I had a Mustang, but I, and, and I sold it, but I got an, it was a fastback, a two plus two 1966 fastback. And it was bright. It was canary yellow and black it was my skin. I, I totally had hot rod of this. I, I was in a Votech class in, in, in a college. I you know, couldn't, I was, and I, I rebuilt the motor there. And, you know, so I was a hypo with the cam and, a, and four speed. And, a, and it was just this hot rod. And I, I went, and that day I talked about all those things, the, the chip and the strangling and the garbage day. That's the day I drove that to Pasadena. Uh-huh. And that was, I was pissed that day because the day earlier, Joe was, Joe Earl was about um, um, t- telling me that, you know, how the, they were going to hire this other guy. He kind of stayed on, rid me on this. We were hi- we were going to hire this other guy. And I, I was like, well, I got hired. I'm doing this. D- don't keep bringing up the fact that that's you know, like your wife saying, well, 
you know, I could have married that guy, that blonde, blue-eyed guy with the big wallet, but I married you. And you know, it's like he, he kept reminding me of uh, the guy that got away. But uh, <laughs> and I was pissed. I was jamming that thing through the gears going up to Pasadena to do all that big day. And it's like, if that uh -huh. guy says anything about that, I'm fucking walking. I was really a hothead back then. <laughs> I, and nobody could take that. It's like, you know, yeah, yeah, I know. It's, you know, the... The, the, the boyfriend with the money on the hill and the, yeah I know. but um so that was the day i was particularly pissed and just and i took my little toy up there mm -hmm. it was my regular driver but i had this other crappy thing old honda civic that had just <laughs> drove around but but that day i just said Fuck it, I'm, heck sorry heck I, <laughs> i'm driving this uh just to just to get steam you know, blow off some steam and uh -huh. i had a posi rear end i was just I was putting it to floor everywhere, all the way up to Sierra Madre. It was like past, it's a nice part of Pasadena up in the hills. And I was just, it was just something to get the, take the edge off of that day. Cause I was, I was sick and tired of being reminded that the other guy was so much better. You know, he was doing, you know, whatever. He was always into the, he was doing such unusual things. And it was, it was always reminding me of this. And his name was, um, David Hevener, mm -hmm. David Hevener, and I know he's had a, a, a decent career as an actor, but that's the guy that was supposed to do SNDN too. And uh, mm -hmm. but I took it away from him because because um, I impressed him. <laughs> you know? I got you. Like yeah, so in a way, I uh, I did what I did. But you know, the money it's making that movie's still making somebody money. The the rights owner I know him, he's making money off that movie. So. It's still working, so right. I got yeah. you. Sorry okay. to get off on that. Other than that, some background. I there wasn't a script. It was it was. I, I literally got hired on a Thursday to start shooting Tuesday, uh, because they said, "Well, we're starting Monday," but that's with the little Ricky, and then you're you're with your five days from Tuesday to Saturday, and so it all happened very quickly. There wasn't time to develop a character. My main concern was to memorize what i had and uh show up be on time don't screw up uh don't be a headache uh yep. i've always been very aware of you know of not putting people out uh you know i drive a car knowing there's people behind me versus modern man who doesn't even think of somebody behind them <laughs> you know you. it's uh i I, I, I can feel someone behind me I, I have a sense about things yep. my my yep. my senses are very aware i yep. guess yep yep, yep. <laughs> it, 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 as as musicians you completely get it because they're you're yep. physical you're you're you, you know mind body it's all gelling you're singing or and yep. this these are talents that i can't do any of them very well but I realized that if you can sing and play guitar and you can stay in sync and complete a song from A to Z, there's a lot of talent there, man. So um, right. that takes an awareness of your senses, your hearing, your sight, your this, your, your internal radars and stuff. So mm -hmm. I was very sensitive too. all men are. Men are more sensitive than women, I feel, in many ways. But we keep it in check. We... We have to because we're men. We, we're kind of told to be, you know, uh, you know, mm -hmm. be the be the man. But but you know, uh, I didn't like being told about this other guy over and over throughout the movie, and um, that 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 did piss me off. And I and I and I'm not blaming anybody. Uh, uh, I did what I did, but um, no one likes to be to hear about that. The the great ex lover or something like. Oh God. Yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I hear you. Well, I believe if that other guy had gotten the part instead of you, I don't think nobody would be talking about this movie now. Nope. No, no. I the agree. thing is, is you're just this naturally entertaining, talented guy, and you're very funny. Yeah. And it just came out. Yep. Yep. In your character. Yep. And mm -hmm. you made that movie so much fun. Yep. Oh. You really did. Oh, thanks. I, I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's true. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> but yeah, exactly, man. It just came out. Yeah. You know, it's it, it, just on a backstory. It's funny because I wasn't really, I was, I, I, I had to go be very serious growing up there. 
um, not the backstory. Look, my my dad left when I was seven. My mom drove away when I was thirteen. So my life of growing up was very quick and very. Mm -hmm. It wasn't fun. Mm -hmm. And the point is, is um, it was a time where I wanted to get through school and. I, I was, I mean, I did anything I could. I would go to like what we call Costco today. I'd buy bags and bags of uh, charms, blow pops, like suckers and in, in quantity, like hundreds. And I'd sell them at school in the morning to all the kids for like 20 cents. I would be like a little salesman. Yep. And, and, and then, and then when, when I was about 14 or 15, I saved enough money to buy a quarter pound of pot. And then I started selling pot and, and then I became, I, and that got me through high school. No, it was very important. I was like, all of a sudden I was bought, you know, and then a quarter and then a half pound and I was buying pounds and I was buying five pounds. But I, the thing is, and it was all, it was all crappy stuff. It wasn't this, 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 this stinky green stuff. With it. But, but the point is, is um, I was a very serious person growing up. And it's funny that I, I actually could convey my humor of, to myself back then was very sarcastic humor. It was really, right. Right. Um, right. I don't know. It wasn't, uh, you know, I wasn't uh, Kramer. I was more, right. you know, right. I, yeah. Um, yeah. it was yeah. like little one-liners anyhow. But my thing was like, you know, but if I wasn't getting beaten up growing up or wasn't selling pot, wasn't doing this or that, uh, you know, and just, I, I got away from all that. It, that was Minnesota, but I, I, I spent a time in Florida and I, I drove out to the coast. But then, then I, my life, I, I, I you know, I got into things I cared about, bodybuilding. I, I didn't drink, you know, and all the guys I grew up with, you know, they all were into cocaine and, and they, they started smoking this stuff and whatever. And a lot of friends I knew would literally had killed themselves. And there was a lot of I, I, I got to get out of this. And, and so I, I moved to Clearwater, Florida and, and broke loose of that in, in that Mustang in, in, you know, before I, I hopped it up, but I stuck that Mustang, the blue one. And then I, and then I, I came out to LA and, and, but the thing is, is you bring that up and it just reminded me of like this life I had, which was not bad compared to, and we all know I've been a very lucky guy and, and we all know really sad stories of people. So I'm, I'm fortunate as heck, but, um, it, it, you know, coming up to that, people never know. Oh, so, oh, oh, you're squeaky clean. Nothing's ever happened to you. You, you know, you don't, you know, you don't have any scars or this or that, but I'm thinking, you know, man, it was do or die all those years. I, I was mm -hmm. at a raking, but every fall I'd rake out the whole neighborhood's leaves. Every, I had this sole circuit. None of the kids my age would rake their only, but I would be, make $30 here, $20 here, $40 here. I would just be raking and bagging for since from seven to about 14. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I got a job in a little, uh, little motel, you know, uh, cleaning, you know, cleaning out everyone's individual rooms and stuff. It was uh, really a kind of a, a, a long-term stay hotels, little, little houses, little bungalow. And I saved up mo enough money to, to, to buy, you know, my brother bought some pot and I watched him and he was, you know, turning into, he started sell, you know, selling and then bought more. And I was like, well, I can do that. And so it, the thing is, we were just hand them off, but we did what we did and it was fairly illegal back then. It was bad. We, things could have been, went, went right, way wrong for me. And, but uh, in, in, you know, how, how illegal it was back then and whatever. And I wasn't a pusher. I, I had a product people wanted. They, they left very happy. And I, I had these pieces of cotton called money and I was happy. And, and, but the point is, is um, it, it was it, that whole life of mine. I, I said, by the time I was 18, I lived like three lives. It was just, it was horrible, more horrible and super horrible, but the, the it, you know, and, and running my, and I, and also that kind of built the idea of being an actor too, because I was very popular as selling grass, <laughs> we call it grass, but selling weed. I was, I was, I was, like, they came to me. I was, they want, you know, I was somebody, you know, <laughs> I wasn't just this nobody. I was, uh, you know, and it, it took, it was real hard to find it. The people thought, oh, see, you get it. So, no, you wouldn't believe that I would have to go down to 
places in other states and I'd meet a guy and it would be packed in Marlboro cartons and, you know, truckers would bring it up. And I mean, all sorts of dicey things to get it. And, or, and, and so it was all sketch. You, you, you had to keep a supply of it. Otherwise you're out of business. Nobody come back. So, I mean, but I kept this little business going, but in the interim, I became a little, a little somebody. And so I'm saying the, the world I had, I could write a thousand books on this, but it, <laughs> it it led to the point of like, I got out of it. I went to Florida, I came out to LA. I saw this drama log and all these act, these little things coming up, these little extra. I did a lot of extra work. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, a lot of it shows that may not be known, Cagney, Lacey and, and Moonlighting and all the soap opera extra work. And I was getting paid 35 bucks a day for standard extra work. Hundred dollars a day for the better extra work, and and I was learning what was going on on the set. And people would say, "Well, that that you don't really do extra work if you want to be an actor." But I got to see the stuff that the camera setups, the this, the that, the, the, the actors Bruce Willis and Sybil Shepherd, and I got to see Tyne Daly and Sharon Glass, and I got to see uh, Ken Wall from Wise Guy was on that show. Uh, uh, Wise Guy. And uh, and how mean he was to people, and how Jonathan Banks was so cool to people, and 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 why you know, and then it's no surprise to me that Ken Wall disappeared. I mean, God, he must have just burnt every bridge in the world. But it's it's funny. I got into that and I said, well, I could do this. I I, I got enough savvy. i you know, and I had a lot of intelligence of growing up like I did, and so it, it was almost. It's funny you, you talk. Oh, it's funny how you did this, but uh, I don't know I, what was in me just came out of me. But it, too much of it came out of me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. so I didn't know how to pull back when I, I should have had Lee. Lee would have just said, "Eric, man, <laughs> calm this down." Uh, you know, <laughs> plenty of time. We, 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 but it was, it was, it was. And I, I for those that hate me, and they will be. I, I, I apologize for those that love me. Um, I did what I did. <laughs> so, I was long winded, but um, it, it, this, this kind of stuff, I've never told that story, but that my upbringing had a lot to do with me coming an actor for sure. It had, because I, I liked the, I liked, I, li I didn't, I wasn't scared on the set or with the people that, that I wasn't nervous. I, I had that experience early on of being around people and, you know, whether we're smoking pot together or whatever we're doing or, or just being the, the 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 guy people wanted to see, or um, you know, I was business. I was all business, but I, you know, mm -hmm. the people I liked, I, you know, I'd say, hey, you know, I got, I would get it. I'd get ounces if you broke it down for twenty bucks, and I'd sell them for forty bucks, but or twenty 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 five, you know, in there. But you know, people I knew or I knew, you know, giving me dollars and change, I'd say, just, just give me what you got, you know, and. Okay. But I, you know, but I was a, I was a businessman, and I, but it also, I, it's good. It was good for me because it made, it, it, it gave me um, feeling like I was somebody. You know, right. coming from that whole broken everything, I, right, right, it right. was it probably saved me, and and, right. and, and, it, and it did all the, so uh, that's the background that led to this that no one. That I, you know, who wants to talk about him selling pot? Well, you were just a drug dealer, but um, it's all what I did to survive. I didn't have right. parents. <laughs> when the principal found out in high school that I didn't, he goes, "Well, what's your mother think of that?" He called me in for something. Oh, that's right, a window was busted, and I got blamed for it because the guy that blamed just didn't like me. I got all of a sudden I'm in the principal's office, and he called <laughs> my parents, and I said, "Well, I said, well, you know, I." I yeah. I, I don't have my mom's not here and he said what do you mean she's not here well she drove away <laughs> and oh, uh, you know and then he yeah. found out i lived in a different i lived in an entirely different district i drove in every day in a truck and uh and then but he he goes well uh you mean you know you know you, you don't have parents and i said no right. he says and then i said oh child services because he goes stay here i'll be right back and i thought i was done <laughs> i thought oh mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh you know <laughs> And I think I even had some like grams of hash in my backpack. <laughs> I was like, I am really done. I'm in his <laughs> principal's office. He comes back and said, uh, I just talked to a friend of mine and um, I got you a job. <laughs> and so <laughs> so he wanted me to work as long as I'm going to high school. 
because I, I nope. didn't have a job. I was slinging hash, literally. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, but he got me a job in a, making jewelry with these ladies. And I'm, it's, I'm making jewelry for, turns out the jewelry is going to New York for these models on the rampway. And, oh, okay. Uh, so I was making jewelry, earrings, bracelets, mm-hmm. necklaces, really nice stuff out of silver mm-hmm. and gold and some brass, too. But I was the guy end up doing all of it, you know, cutting, forming, shaping, sanding, polishing, you know. But that was it. I was like 15 or 16, 16. And, and they're paying me two thirty two an hour. And I'm selling pot, making, you know, I'm making real money. And I'm like, and, and she calls me in. It's a stupid story. But she goes, well, I want to talk to you at the end of the day. I go, oh, I'm fired. I'm doing all the work. I'm I'm slave. I'm feeling like I'm, you know. I'm, I'm doing all their work. They're just, you know, I'm even cleaning the bathroom because these ladies are pigs. Nevertheless, she called me in at the end of the day and, and I go, oh, I'm getting fired. And she goes, well, you're doing a great job. I'm giving you a nickel an hour raise. <laughs> nickel an hour. <laughs> so I was like, nickel an hour. I don't think I lasted a week late. I just, I, I, I didn't even say I was quitting. I just didn't go back. And, uh, but, you know, that's the, the principal could save me. He could have turned me into child service. He could have ruined me, but yeah, yeah. I was all very fortuitous. I've been a lucky guy and I was that's able to amazing. escape all that. And yeah, LA and yep. looking at the drama log, saw the ad for the untitled horror film casting in Burbank. So that's stuff that leads up to what Ricky, what you guys know. And yep. um, so I, I'm a lucky guy. And, why did I bring that? I don't know if it was boring. I apologize because we've been at it a while, but this is no, stuff. That no, no one ever knows this. Stuff. This is yeah. like background, yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah, no, there was, uh, there was a lot of good things in that movie. That I can remember as well. So there's, I'm sure you, you would have liked to ask me questions and I, I'll shut up, but no, you're good. <laughs> uh, we can always do this again. If you guys want to do it the right way and do it just movie, we, well, we can do it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'd love to talk to you again in the future on the show. Dude, yeah, it's come all cr- good, brother. Christmas time, you know, what's fired up, you know. Appreciate you being up so late. Oh, and I, and, dude, and next, we love it. We it love it. Our pleasure. <laughs> next here. time we'll um yeah. we'll uh we'll 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 you want to do it November or December? Let's let's get it on. We'll do it again. Oh, it's we'd love to talk yeah, to you again. Absolutely, man. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and you can, you know, uh, you know, tell me about what's going, you know, what what you're doing, and you can get more into. I'd rather know what you know, what what where you're playing, or what you're doing, or what new song you came up with, or whatever. I mean, I that's cool. No, that's more. Uh huh. That's broad based, you know. And I mean, it's. I think it's more of an audience for music and metal than me, but. Uh-huh. Um, and I'm more. I'm interested in that anyhow, so I'm on board. I'd rather ask you guys questions. Like, <laughs> oh, hey, that's cool. That's hey, cool, that's man. That's a way to mix yeah. it up. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Hey, I like it. I mean, it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> I'll just have to have a conversation with you. We'll get the we'll get the twenty the twenty you know topics or, or points that to, to go by, and I'll, I'll say I'll I'll, I'll get to, I'll, I'll dig in. Uh, I think we should do it. I think you should interview us one day. (laughs) That would be great. Yeah, I'd say, look, I know all about garbage, so uh, (laughs) I got that cornered. So let's let's uh, let's elevate ourselves to, you know, get into the musical genre. But uh, no, that that'd be cool because I know you guys are got your own things going on, and uh, right. And to my, you know, to me, that's real. It's music. Thank you, man, uh, man I, you know nothing's better than a cool beat. Thank you for talking to me. Well, it's everything. You get. Thank yep. you. Um, and yeah, we'll cut out. Have a good rest of your evening. And um, sorry, I kept you from better things uh, on your no, Friday. No, no, man. Oh, no, 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 dude. We, man, Eric, you are man. You're always welcome. You're awesome. It's crap, dude. <laughs> well, we'll do it again. It's, you, you name uh-huh. it. But uh, August, September, October, November. We'll, we'll right, December. We'll, we'll do that. We'll fire some up in December, you know. It's uh, sweet, and we'll have fun. We'll 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 uh, we'll we'll, we'll do, uh, delve in more to in the Christmas spirit of things. <laughs> we'll, I got uh, you. Okay, we'd like that. Yep, yep, yep. Sweet, yeah. brother. All Thanks, right, guys. man. I hope you have an awesome day, brother. Thank you, my friend. All right. <laughs> have a good night. We'll see ya. <laughs> All right. Take it easy, man. Rock on, brother. <laughs> All right. Yeah. You too. <laughs> The Henry Kern Show would like to thank our friend, Cruise Effects, 
Slip Trick Records. Pick World Guitar Picks. And of course, Nebulous Music Studios in Royston, Georgia.